One of the things we're celebrating is the fact that the unemployment rates are declining. But one of the consequences of that is it's hard to find people to hire. Uh, what are we seeing in terms of the talent that companies need as they look at really growing their company, needing particular talent? Where are we today in Connecticut with being able to fill those jobs? Well, <laughs> I spent this morning with the superintendent of the Wallingford School System, who is actually coming with me to Australia in about six weeks to look at some of the things they're doing there. And they wanted to see what he's doing in Wallingford, because Wallingford is doing incredible stuff starting in kindergarten. And part of our problem and that I've seen traditionally is that we kind of start with 16-year-olds telling them, gee, you want to make sure that you go to college and get a degree in whatever, um, without really thinking about what we need here in Connecticut. And, and I know I'm on the engineering school board at UConn, and, and it's very frustrating because we have companies like Electric Boat screaming for engineers we, and welders. Um, so we need to start at kindergarten teaching kids STEM, because that's mm -hmm. become very important. And also, what we don't do well, and, and I saw this in the UK last week with some of the meetings I had there, coming to you folks and saying, what do you need, and we're gonna educate for you, versus what teachers in K through 12 and college <laughs> think they need. Um, and I've, I've seen this, I, and, and um, I'll up here give a great example. I was at UConn talking about how we need to trade, do more trade compliance because any company that is exporting, particularly in any high-end sector stuff, high technology, they have to know trade compliance. And, and it's very important. You can go to jail, you can get fined, the whole thing. And I had an incredible argument with a professor who said, no, it's much more important to have human rights compliance. And I said, well, you know, the reality here is I think human rights compliance is real important. But if somebody goes and talks to Olaf and says, oh, I've had 16 courses in human rights, or says, hey, I've had 16 courses in trade compliance, which one are you going to hire, Olaf? Well, it's uh, obvious. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, so we, part of it is we need to hear from you folks. What do you need? What are the skills you need? And that's what's going to bring the state. And we've, we've done that. We do that as Nuntuck has done a great job with yeah, that. You've got the engineering school, which as I am part of, you know, we do that every day. But you folks have a voice. Talk to your legislature. Talk to everybody and don't shut up until you get what you want. Because the school systems are for training people to be into the workforce and have livelihoods when they get out. Apropos of this comment, going back to the morning in Hartford and the conversation about the commission and change and so forth, one of the things that they were pushing for was for all of us to raise our voices about the things we thought could help make the state more economically competitive and prosperous. And one of the realities, I think, apropos of your comment, Anne, is that we were doing a program around manufacturing not so long ago. And one of the realities that came out in that conversation was this uh, sort of sense in our community still that manufacturing is a dirty, dangerous environment and a job that people wouldn't want. And if you go into most of the companies we're talking about, Electric Boat, and you, you look at, uh, exactly, it's an operating room. It's spotless. You can eat off the floors. Does it, does These are changes. Small yeah. company. Yeah. So, so it's, it's just a conception that many people have that we collectively need to help moderate if young people are going to be motivated to enter certain career paths. Any other thoughts on the staffing and people? Some, Bill? Pe some companies are act actually now, some companies are actually paying to have their these students come in, training them, knowing that when they're done with their training, they're good, whether it's CNC operators or whatever, they're, once they're done with their training, they're coming back into well paying jobs. These aren't bad jobs, these are very well paying jobs, which provide these, pe these young people uh, you know, a good career start. You might want to add something on the veterans side? Any comments there? Of course, our veterans are some of the work. Well, best trained people in the world. Uh, they're, they're, they're business ready, uh, you know, they're, they're used to being self-taught self and they're very autonomous. And most veteran all, uh, business owners, uh, most veterans are their own business owners because they'd like to be their own leader. Thank you. Wendy. Uh, 
I would just add on the family owner side to make sure that you're looking at uh, competencies that are being built in the rising generation and family employment policy that you set in place before personalities become an issue. Uh, so in my uh, experience, I've seen some derailers occur when family will place people in the family in positions that they are not competent to run, and it's a failure. It's a lose-lose situation for everyone. And so thinking ahead and considering what are the competencies that my son or daughter or our cousins need to run this family business and, and make it grow, uh, is important to consider from the from the starting point. Anne mentioned that she's on the advisory board for the engineering school. Uh, in the business school, we have a number of advisory boards, and all of us are actively working to engage our alumni as advisors for us in being sure that we're delivering what young people need to know today to be successful. Bill? For some reason, Connecticut uh, Department of Labor comes to mind. I'm, I'm almost positive they have a resource or on their, on their website of uh, uh, placement for manufacturers that help them with the hiring of people that, you know, that have that type of uh, background and capabilities. So I think one of the questions here is, uh, at UConn, we're anxious to find the right pathways to provide information in units that people need. And so increasingly today, you hear about the degree, the certificate, the badge, so there are a lot of different ways to package information. One of the things that we're looking at around the family business uh, domain is getting better insight into what family businesses think they need to know more about and how would they like to work together to create opportunities for that information to be prepared and provided. Some of what you're after here is curating information in a way that makes it efficient for you to get it, right? Uh, when Bill talks about going to the SCORE member, that's when you know what you need and you go and you ask, how can you help me learn this thing I want to learn? Alternatively, there's the I know I don't know a lot. I need a large set of advice about the body of knowledge that I want access to. Those are two very different clients, if you will, and they need different kinds of services. So one of our challenges as an academic institution is to work with organizations to figure out what knowledge is needed. And I was recently talking to a company, um, and in the financial services space especially, there was a tradition 25 and 30 years ago where young people were hired and they were trained. They were actively trained by their employer in multi-month programs that lasted for several years often, and not surprisingly, it became easier to cut those out and instead to hire trained people from your competition. And so after about 15 or 20 years of that new model, the competition doesn't have so much good talent to hire anymore. Many of the financial services enterprises are graying in terms of their talent. And there's a, a loss of, of an emptiness in terms of developing mid-level talent. Another example where they're just little gaps, and the question is how can we collectively meet that need? Insurance is an industry where this has been a bit of a problem, for example. 